This is an introduction to the Isilon on Cluster Analysis Tool, formerly RPS Easy Health. This tool was originally designed to replace a number of manual checks performed by the remote practice team immediately prior to upgrade activities. It now includes all of the checks included in the Log Analysis Tool, Isilon Advisor. The latest details and information about the Isilon on Cluster Analysis Tool can be found at https colon forward slash forward slash support.emc.com forward slash kb forward slash 503-265. That's Knowledge Base Article 503-265. When running the Isilon on Cluster Analysis Tool, please always ensure that you are running the most recent version to ensure that you are performing the most up-to-date checks on the cluster where it is being ran. When staging the script, it is recommended to stage the file to the IFS data Isilon support directory. However, if that directory is not writable, it can be staged and ran from any directory in the cluster. To execute the Isilon on cluster analysis tool, you must be logged in as the root user or the comp admin user for compliance mode enabled clusters. You must also be in the directory where the script is staged. From the directory where the script is staged, run Perl, followed by the name of the script, and then any additional arguments. If you run the script with no additional arguments, it's going to perform a full health check. It can take anywhere from a few seconds to a couple minutes to complete to run. It is important to note that if the cluster is currently experiencing any BMC CMC type issues, the script may take even longer to run, anywhere from 15 to 20 minutes, and it may hang at certain points for more than 5 to 10 minutes. And there you go. As you can see, this is not the most healthy cluster in the world. It does have a couple little issues with power supplies, most likely BMC CMC related because it has out-of-date firmware. You can see here that it does check firmware. It also checks patches, system free space, uh, a bunch of stuff. The iPhone on cluster analysis tool also supports a handful of additional arguments which can alter the checks performed and the results provided. Here is a breakdown of the most frequently used arguments. The dash H or dash dash help will provide a list of supported arguments. This list is also maintained in the Knowledge Base Article 503-265. And there we go. The dash V or dash dash version will display the version of the script currently being ran. Again, please always ensure you are using the most recent version available. It is also listed when you're running dash help. A destination 1FS version may also be provided, and this allows the script to run in a pre-upgrade check mode, where it performs only checks relevant for an upgrade to the provided destination 1FS version. Here I'm demonstrating running it in a pre-upgrade check for 8102. As you can see, it has flagged a specific issue related to upgrades from this version to 8102, where the Easy Drive D repurpose service would have to be disabled during the upgrade. And there we go. A, if the provided destination 1FS version is newer than the version that the Iceland on cluster analysis still recognizes, it will fill out and it will list the supported destination 1FS codes that it does support. That's running it for 8103, which at this time is currently unavailable. And there you can see it lists out what, the, what available 1FS versions there are. The dash DSP or dash dash drive dash support dash package, dash DFP or dash dash drive dash firmware dash package, and dash NF or dash dash node dash firmware 
allow you to specify a specific firmware package to be selected when performing the health checks. The version that is being checked for will be displayed next to the relevant firmware check section in parentheses. Dell EMC always recommends the latest firmware packages to be used when performing firmware updates. However, some customers have very specific version requirements. These arguments allow for checking against the specific firmware version or firmware package. The dash U or dash dash upgrade plan is used to develop an action plan for upgrades that are to be executed by the remote proactive team and is typically combined with a destination 1FS version. For example, If we rerun it in a pre-upgrade check mode, targeting 8102, and add in the dash U flag, it's not going to run the same checks that it did previously, but after they have finished running, we'll display extra details in terms of activities that needs to be scheduled with Remote Proactive to have their team execute the upgrade, as well as some additional information that can be provided to prepare the customer for the specific upgrade. So there we go. You can see it did complete all the checks, and we have a couple extra items here that we would want to inform the customer about. For example, they would want to update their licensing after the upgrade, and they want to be informed about the LACP issue with the 8102 code as well. Here's a list of all the files that would be utilized in performing this upgrade, and the actual work that would need to be scheduled with remote practice to have the upgrade successfully completed. This is six hours of work where we would do node firmware, BMC firmware, 1FS, and two rolling patch installs. The next argument, dash S, or dash dash simultaneous, allows the upgrade plan to be altered to provide simultaneous reboots, upgrades, and patch installs where possible. So the previous time that we ran it, as you can see here, it said it's going to be about six hours. When performing the upgrades in a simultaneous manner, we would expect it to be significantly less than that. And there we go. So now it's flagging that it's only going to take three and a half hours, and the simultaneous upgrade and patches are all meshed together to have them done with dash dash rolling equals false as opposed to triggering a rolling reboot with dash dash rolling equals true. The SCO and TSC arguments allow the checks to basically be tailored for that specific FCO or TSC, and an upgrade plan provided if affected by the FCO or TSC, um, including the steps required to complete that FCO or TSC. The dash E or dash dash extra argument will run the script in a more verbose mode, providing extra details alongside a majority of the checks that are performed. The dash D or dash dash debug will run the script in a debug mode. This is typically restricted for troubleshooting purposes if an issue were identified in the script. The dash dash run equals check name allows a specific check to be executed as opposed to running all of the checks. This is most useful when combined with the dash dash extra argument to find additional details for a check that fell. A full list of checks that can be performed in this manner will be listed when you run Perl IOCA dash dash run. This list is also maintained in the knowledge base article 503265. Now I'll demonstrate running the boot disk check. with the dash dash extra argument. And there we go. You can see that it still passed the boot disk checks and gave us some extra details about what it saw with the boot disks. So here we can see the where life remaining, historic error count, what firmware version it's at, the model number, and serial number. And each check may include extra details along these lines to give more details about what is specifically being checked. 
And that wraps things up for the ISON on cluster analysis tool. Thank you for your time.